I'm Jerry Hess, and I'm teaching a workshop, a whole body workshop in New York, and this is the last weekend in March 2019. And Michelle presents what we call a right anterior ilium. And the old theory tells us that with a right anterior ilium, the ilium rotates on the sacrum and gets stuck. <coughs> However, that would imply that motion, that rotation occurs at the pubic joints. And I find these patterns with no rotation at the pubic joint, so we need an alternate explanation. And I think it's as simple as the entire pelvis is oriented to the left, more forward on the right, about an axis near the left hip joint, and that it's the entire pelvis moving on the hips, not a phenomenon of a sacrum moving on an ilium. Okay? If there is movement inside the SI, it's too subtle for us to tell in the clinic. We cannot evaluate that in the clinic, so I think it's a more global phenomenon. Um, so what she presents with is her right ASIS is more anterior, and I don't think the film, the camera can capture that. I think it's too subtle, so you're fine with the, the camera being where it is. So the right ASIS is anterior. It's also inferior in relationship to the left. The anterior shelf of the ilium is lower on the right side. Now more important than how something looks is how does it move. So what I do is I come and I try and take up the slack and I cannot. I'm pushing with a moderate amount of force and I'm getting no movement in her right ilium. When I come to the left side, look what happens. I push with a mild force and I can take up the slack. And once I take up the slack, I can then spring it and it bounces and it bounces right back. It recoils. <coughs> so this is normal movement on the left and this is blocked movement on the right. Okay? So line your stomach, please. Now with an anterior ilium, when the person is prone, the iliac shelf on the right is going to be higher. And I'm going to take up the slack and then spring it and we have good motion. Now when I go inferiorly, I can take it, nope. I cannot get, get inferior mobility. On the left side, I can take up the slack and I can get inferior mobility. Okay? Now it does not meet the definition of a posterior ilium because on the left side I can take up the slack and I can rotate it forward. So it's not stuck posteriorly. There's good vertical mobility on this side of the sit bone and there's good vertical mobility on this side because it can go further into that rotational pattern. So it's a three-dimensional pattern about, about an oblique axis, okay? And um, if you would lie on your back one more time, I palpate down the length of the pubic bone, I palpate the top of the pubic bone, I come from the belly button area, and there's pubic bone, and the top is equal, I'm on the front of the pubic bone on both sides, allowing about four millimeter space in between, She's symmetrical all the way down. So again, I think it's a rotational pattern of the entire pelvis and hip complex and trunk. All right? Um, there will be some muscle <coughs> inhibition with this pattern. Now lie on your stomach, please. First, we're going to look at hip extension. That's 20 plus, maybe it's 25 degrees. That's 10 degrees. So we have a distinct reduction of hip extension on the same side. And it also affects her strength. I want you to lift your, your left leg up, keeping your knee straight. Show me how strong you are. One, two, three, go. And I'm having a hard time pushing that leg down. Now do it on the right side. On the count of three, give me everything you got. One, two, three, go. It's so easy for me to break. So we have some muscle inhibition of your hip extensors on the right. Now your body has to counter-rotate somewhere to keep your eyes horizontal. 
So let's have you lie on your back, and we're not going to film her face. We're going to preserve her privacy. Um, but go ahead and turn the camera towards her face. I've got it covered with my hand. When I come underneath the transverse process of C1, which is also called the atlas, I notice there's increased muscle tone. And when I try and lift up on the right side, that would cause left rotation that's blocked. Okay? When I do the opposite, on the left, I can raise it up and I can easily induce right rotation. So the compensation for the right anterior ilium, which actually is a twist of the entire pelvis, the compensation is that C1 is in a pattern of right rotation. And that's a muscular nervous system response. So let's now film her lower body. So now you can't see her face anymore. <coughs> and what she's going to do is hug her right knee bent and towards the outside of her shoulder. <coughs> so the hip is, relax, let me point it outward. So out this way, good, grab it. So it's pointing outside of the shoulder and somebody give me a time of two minutes. And this is the self-treatment for anterior ilium and it's very effective. So rather than film for two more minutes, we'll stop and we'll come back and we'll film the response to self-treatment. <coughs> 